Didn't realize the music went that long. Yeah, some of them are, uh... Some of them are super long. Okay. Guys, let's plan. Are you ready? Remove all of our markers. Does anybody know what this uh, border is that's, like, adjusting in these areas? Oh, maybe, maybe mule activity? Just based on this mule post box? What are my thoughts on the game so far, Species? Uh, I really like it, if you're asking me directly. I really like it a lot. We can pretty much just take the same path back. I don't think it, it's that sketch. I'm going to mark this out. We'll hit the bridge. All right. This is going to be a little tougher because we're carrying a bunch. Take care of BB. Oh, I will. I can't thank you enough. I really can't. Here, let's check on BB right now. Look at him. He's doing great, guys. We've got the BB emote, so this would be the time. Look at him. Feeling soothed. Good night, Cyril. Look at him. He's loving it in there. This little nugget container. It's okay. It's all right. In the future, once we get super chicken nuggets, that's how we're going to deliver them to people. Inside of that specifically created container. Can it bounce? I don't think so. We're drinking our monster energy. Let's roll. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, like, this bridge, this was not here when we just came past. Well, enjoy it. At least while it lasts. So is this, like, a group resting thing? Listen, it gets all, like, tranquil. Come on, what you got? Let's do this. There's still so many things we're like, I don't know what that does. Whoa, dude. Almost fell count of five. I know. So somebody must have just built this bridge here. Man, it's got so many likes. Look at these. What the? Okay, that's going to the way station west of Capital Not City. Way station west of Capital Not City. And distribution center. Ah, see, that's super far to carry that all. If we see anything for the distribution center, we'll pick it up. How do we know Sam's not some clone? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know anything. The answer to uh, anything that starts with... Nice. 
how do we know or how do we not know? Impossible. What is this? Character figurines. Oh, whoops. Maybe these are what get added to our bed. Cargo container colors. Take special care of gold containers. You can't get them or their contents back if they're damaged beyond repair. You do move more slowly while braced. It's not a, a lot, but if you just run around holding both, that's your kind of carefree way of doing it for sure. Look at this rope. That guy's got a ladder over there. Why? I'm 25 kgs. Massive upper arm strength. <laughs> Look at this. That's all arms. Vinny, could you do that? I don't know, man. I don't know if you, you could even pull that off. Absolute beast. See, we threw it back down like we should. And these guys are profiting off my rope. Distribution center west of Capital Not City. That's what we want, right? Yeah. This one's going to be a bit more rough. if there'll be someone who does a no fall run restart if you fail I don't think it's that hard to manage yeah the music is good I wonder if we should grab those medals. You know what? I'm going to. There's no time fall right now. Let's take advantage.
See, I'd be totally down for this if uh, I wasn't carrying all the stuff on my back. Oh my god. <laughs> that seems like quite the tumble. Let's go around. Isn't this the most relaxing thing that you've ever experienced in your entire existence? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that was close. Do not fall. This is a very precarious metal case that we're trying to get here. Oh boy. Hmm. We did it. Can I increase the in-game volume? Uh, I can. We should grab that too. Distribution center. See, this is how we... That's not it. <laughs> this is how we make efficient use of our... capacity, ladies and gentlemen. ASMR grass crunching. <gasps> yeah, I could see that. I'm here for all of your grass crunching needs. Too close. Meaty Thumbs. That is a fantastic name. Thank you so much, man. Hey, Sam. Probably get that bike running again if you charged it with a generator. Oh, see? Why not give it a try? Yes. Guys, I think we're getting a bike. I think we're getting a bike. So what exactly are the BTs? Like human souls or something? Ish. Ish. A good question, John. Anybody home? Huh. Cool. Try calling out in various places and someone's bound to respond eventually? Here we are. What? Decontaminating soon. All clear. Keep on keeping on. Sam Porter Bridges. Keep on keeping on. Everything's affected by time fall, but not these buildings. So you can build, um... Oh, look at that. Bond with BB is strengthened. <laughs> Someone's happy. Hell yeah! Um, on your own structures, you're able to build reinforced, uh, using, or using reinforced materials. It's expensive. Uh, but it prevents time, shawl, time fall wear and tear. So I imagine that these guys also have the ability to do that. There we go. Delivery happening. Uh, deliver cargo specifically requested by this client. Yes. Um, power supply inspection tools. Resins delivery. Super cool. Enjoy. We are all in, buddy. You are a legend. Thanks. Meaty's saying, just watch yesterday's five hours. Have we become weaponized? No, but I think we're going to get our bike now, based on what we just heard. So that's something. 
Richardson provides you the following sound data, anything you need. The sound data can be listened to in your private room to use it for a structure, gain access to level two or higher structure, and select customized structure. Okay. Distribution Center west of Capital Knot City has provided you following new hologram data, Benjamin Hancock. New interview data acquired, chiral contamination and BTs are reaching out to us. Bandwidth increased, connection level increased, the amount that we can use at these distribution centers has increased. Everything's going well, basically. Hope at some point there's ways to increase capacity. I'm like 99% sure that there is. New record for Sawsome. Pretty solid. So I, I think these... Were these the random ones that we picked up on the way? I think so. The special machine and the disc-based media. I'm going to turn on the auto skip now and just to see like how much quicker this part goes. Skilled handler. I don't know anyone who's done more to bring people together and get them back on their feet. <laughs> it's hard to believe you're just one guy. Can't help wondering if the great deliverer isn't actually a small army. Because it sure seems like whenever someone's in trouble, you're there to lend a hand. What are you it's saying? You think you just might make it all the way to the coast. Good luck out there. I'll be rooting for you. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. I'm going to deliver these things. Oh, look at this. Luden's fan. 613 meters. Hold on a second. I wasn't sure what that meant. What is Luden's fan? Oh, here. Do we know what the Luden's fan? I don't think we've been there. We should definitely check that out, though, because it's like a specific place. So we're going to hold that. Let's check our orders. Urgent. Crypto buyout delivery. Capital not city. And confidential documents to the way station west of Capital Knox City. Okay. What's with the, uh, let's hear this. The Capital Knot Distro Center is holding some crypto biodes we need delivered to the city. Crypto biode cells can accelerate blood production in humans. They may well be the hardiest organisms on Earth, capable of enduring more physiological stress than any other. In harsh conditions, a crypto biode will eventually enter an metabolic state in a bid to survive. Unfortunately, shoving a bunch into a shipping container or submerging them in water for an extended period of time <laughs> is enough to trigger this response. It takes weeks to coax them back to life if they're allowed to fully transition to this state. So you can't keep them cooped up for long. Make sure to reach Capital Knot City before it's too late. Okay, so this one might be timed, I'm wondering. For this retrieval order, you'll be hunting down a book. An old school printed on paper book, the kind that predates the Death Stranding. That's cool. Even before the world went to shit, most were published in digital formats only. It's rare to find one intact these days. Apparently, this particular book was the work of researchers who may have anticipated the Death Stranding. It was en route to Hartman when it was taken. Mules, according to Waystation staff, in case you hadn't guessed. The book's no different from any other cargo to them. But to us, it's priceless. Okay. Get it back, Asa. So we actually have a, uh, we, we do have a pretty good path. Now, if this is timed, I probably don't want to accept the order until 
until I'm like ready to go, right? So we're gonna hit our private room. We're gonna pound some monsters, increase our energy, and then we're gonna get out of here. Maybe shower, poo, you know, whatever. Oh yeah, and the bike. We should maybe set up the bike first. We're tuckered out. Ferex, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime for two months. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Good morning, Sam. Mail from Jake Wind and Benjamin Hancock. Figurines are the same. We're going to drink... Uh, are two and a half prescribed monsters. Oh, you can skip this. <laughs> That's hilarious. We'll we'll take in the last one. I didn't know you could skip them. We'll keep the last one in there for you guys. I know you want to see it, the whole thing. Yes, yeah, so that maxes out our, our energy gauge. Uh, let's do it. Solex Racing. This, uh, thank you for the Prime sub. This uh, number two usage is brought to you by Zolex Racing. Remember that. <laughs> Unskippable ads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. EX grenade number two. EX grenade number two. See? So we're actually... <laughs> this is how we're weaponizing. That should suffice. Glad to see everything's in good working order. That's hilarious. The latest in our line of EX grenades. I give you the number two. The number two. As you may have surmised, this model was produced with various extracts refined from your fecal matter. Nice. We suspect that your regular consumption of cryptobiotes has yeah. led you to excrete certain compounds that may prove especially effective against BTs. Totally. If you would like us to produce more, you need only furnish us with the requisite raw materials via your private room's toilet. Great. I look forward to your feedback. So literally, well, now we have to, now we have to use it standing. We have a, we have a, 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 a grenade zero, right? From our uh, bodily runoff while we showered. Uh, we use the toilet sitting, which got us grenade two. So it would stand to reason that using toilet standing it is brought to us by our brand new sub, Trip A. Please enjoy this moment. Brought to you by Trip A. Nice. EX grenade number one. Oh, you get two grenades out of that. Restocked in private locker. Okay. Okay. That's, that's actually a really creative... Uh, of our new EX grenades. The number really creative. one. So named because it contains a vaporized extract formulated from your urine. Yeah. Compared to our first iteration, this EX grenade contains a higher concentration of your fluids, which should make it more effective against BTs. Yeah. Whenever you avail yourself of your private room's facilities, we will collect the results and produce additional units for your use. So you needn't worry about uh, running out. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, well. Time to shower and see if we get more. Hey, Shepard, what's going on, man? It's nice to see you. Can you donate another fluid? Well, like what? Yep. 
this is what happens when you give Kojima too much money. Yeah, it is. It's, but it's also, it's good. It's really good. Okay, let's go. Uh, this stuff's all fine. Nothing new. I don't see the purpose of this terminal down here other than just like going through the same stuff that we could go through previously. Oh, we could play music when we come in here. That's right. But I can't. Okay. Uh, Easton, cargo quantity and your porter grades. How are your porter grades these days, Sam? I'm sure you're aware that trying to account for all five factors is the basic premise, but if you're anything like me, you just want to deliver as much stuff as you can. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? If so, you could always just load yourself up with a massive haul and aim for a bridge's bonus for total cargo weight. Nothing wrong with the simple approach. Of course, in the good old days, it was easier. Roads were much better back then, so all you had to do was chuck your stuff in the back of a truck and go for a drive. Can't do that now, though. Even if you've got a truck, they're usually more trouble than they're worth. Hell, sometimes you'll see them just sitting on the side of the road, locked and abandoned. Anyways, on the bright side, since lugging big loads of cargo is so hard these days, folks are really grateful when a porter manages it. Hence the bonuses. Here at the Distro Center, for example, we have to make sure we've got plenty of food and materials in stock, which means we have to make every delivery count. I dread to think what would happen if we ran out of supplies. Well, I said my piece, and now you know how to make yourself popular around these parts. Stack your cargo high. It's very competing information. Jake Wind from the Wind Farm. But then, like, what about Hancock and Baton and Easton? Where are their names coming from? Hard work's paying off. I wonder where you are right now. If it's somewhere powered by our wind farm. If anyone should be benefiting from our work, it's you. Until you brought us into the network, we can only provide power to a small region. Now we can send it to all the big cities and beyond. Still not 100% in the details. Basically, transmitting it via the beach means we don't suffer any additional loss due to increased distances. So it can go as far as we need to. Good thing we kept the faith in the second expedition and kept this place properly maintained. You made our efforts worthwhile. I can't thank you enough. And lastly, the meaning of chirality. Dear Sam, sorry you had to go to the trouble of chasing down that part for us, but believe me, you've done us a great service. Thanks to you, our chiral printer's finally up and running. Don't think it would ever happen, if I'm honest. But if it did... Oh, but it did. And now we don't have to rely on porters as much as before. We can make a lot of what we require with our printer. If we need intel on the outside world, it's right there at our fingertips. On behalf of myself and everybody else here at the Distro Center, thanks. None of this would have been possible without you. Funny story. The other day I was using the network to read up on the word chiral and where it comes from. Turns out it's Greek. Means hand. Bet you didn't know that. Yeah, we did. The text went on uh, about how your right hand is a mirror image of your left, but only if you put your palms together. You guys sound familiar? And if you point them away and lay one hand on top of the other, well, it's chirality. That's how I understood it anyhow. What's it got to do with the network? I'm not really sure. Something about routing communications through the beach, which is basically another world like ours, but not really. So when you force elements of the two into contact, that triggers void out. Anyway, all I know is that while I hope you keep on doing what you do to bring us together, you'd best leave the dead out of it. You hear? Yeah. I hear. Okay, so we're going to build the energy thing. And then we're going to try to get that bike going. Then we'll take those orders. We are learning. Take a look. Here we go again. What the world like hundreds of millions of years ago. Gondwana? There's just one big continent. And... Do you know what this is? This is the flashback to the dad. Mads. I'll show you the real thing soon. I promise. How long ago was this actually? We don't know. Because the babies are kept around the same age or something. The whole wide world will be yours to explore. You'll be able to go wherever you want. Even the moon. 
The moon. <sighs> I mean, why not? It's so weird. This reminds me of the, um... This reminds me so much of, like, the Black Mirror episode. Where everybody's rating every interaction they have with other people. Weapons restrictions lifted. Placing hand-carried cargo on a vehicle. Oh, cool. Okay, well, first things first. I only have one of these, so I'm gonna try to remember to build one. Generator. Hmm. Twenty seconds. Oh, that is messed up. Yeah, it's cool. I really, man. I, I don't know. I really like it so far, man. I'm having a. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm, I'm like really enjoying it, and I find it such an easy. I don't know. It's really easy for me to get into. We have a bike. That's unbelievable. This is amazing. This is awesome. This is so cool. <laughs> this bike is brought to you by the most recent Prime sub, Grakinski. Thank you, Grakinski. Oh, that is so cool. Let's... Oh, hold on. Let's just ride this sucker first. Repairing vehicles. Vehicles have a durability rating. It will no longer move once this is depleted. Durability is restored by storing a vehicle in the garage. To store a vehicle, park it on top of a vehicle elevator. You hear that sound that it makes when it pulses the uh, energy tower? That sounds like what happens when an enemy mech in XCOM shows up. It's, it's almost the exact same sound. I just want to see how it drives before we do the real thing. Okay, it's... It's alright. It's alright. Whoa! <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm doing that. That's so cool. Alright, this is the best. This is how I ride my motorcycle, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Vehicle batteries are solar powered, so they'll recharge in clear or cloudy weather. Facilities and major roads have their own power grid, meaning the batteries will not be drained when you're using them. Not bad. Okay, let's take our orders and go. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Clear. Weapons detected. All weapons decontaminated. Keeping all clear. Sam Skifter says, I think the people giving it too much shit are missing the point a bit. This really isn't the triple A kind of gameplay everyone expects, but in a good way. I agree with you, Skifters, 100%. I love when games try something different and when they nail it. Damn, Zoe. Thank you so much. Just gifted five subs. That's so generous. Thank you. You rock. Thank you very much. Gifted a sub to Choco Billy, Follow Cure, S Black One, Drunkle Possum, and Banana Screw. <laughs> Banana Screw. It's good. It's good. Okay, we're gonna take this job because, I mean, there's no time limit. I don't think. Uh, let's just mark multiple here, and then I have a plan. This is a somewhat unusual Yeah, order. delivery time limit. There we go. You're going to want to review the key points in the summary. Yeah, so time limit 30 minutes. Do not submerge. Also <laughs> of note. Okay. Do not submerge this cargo in rivers or other bodies of water. Water can enter the container and cause damage to the contents. Be especially careful in crossing rivers and streams. That's why they were talking about the... Uh, okay. 
that's why they were talking about the water to set us up to learn about uh, these type of things. That's awesome. So what, does this thing have anything going on? Cargo recovery, condition less than 50% damage, so that's fine, whatever. All right. Hey, Christian, are we looking forward to the Witcher series? I would I would think most people would be pretty stoked, yeah. Okay, so wait, is this saying that I have four of them right now? I have four of those, three of these, four of these, but I don't know what that second icon means. I'll double check. That's a breathable container, remember? For Look at that. Sake, Live animals? Immerse it in water. That's so sweet. Okay, we're definitely going to take some of these. So I have two ladders on my suit. I have one PCC. I have some uh, repair spray. I've got those figurines, which I have a plan for. I have some grenades. Oh, here we go. So here's the stuff that we stored before. Let's take these grenades, I guess. I'm going to optimize this after. We have a ton of PCCs. So those numbers that we see must uh, are maybe counting what's in here as well. See, look at that. It's got the, the cryo things right behind us. See, what would be interesting is if you built up like a huge tower of these things, how, what would happen what would happen if you, um... Order assigned. Delivery parameters updated. Holy frick. Time limit set. Now I'm nervous. Look at it. It's going to show us the whole time. Have a pleasant journey. If you have a huge stack and you go through water, that specific box with the holes in it, I imagine, is still fine. Not, you know, I would imagine. Okay, I got to, like, plan out my route. I got all sorts of stuff to do here. Hey guys, I'm going to catch up on the notifications in one second. We want to go here, okay? This is the first place that we want to go. Because uh, we need to drop off those figurines here. Then... Uh, oh, yikes. I wonder if I can come through here. This might be dicey, but I, it's hard to say. And especially with the bike, like, I don't know if that's good or bad. And then we would come, like, down here. Are we paused? Like, is time running while I'm doing this or less? They will here. Okay, buckle up. This could be rough. I don't know how this thing's gonna control with all our gear. I don't know what's gonna happen. Weapons restrictions lifted. All I hear is mechs <laughs> when that thing pulses. That's so crazy. Make sure that this is not at all where I want to be going. This is not at all the direction.
Okay, we'll hit it. Where's my timer, man? I kind of want that, like, full time. Why is my- why am I dragging my foot? This is gonna be rough, this bike. This will be fine. If this bike makes it in one piece, I will be blown away. What the? Reversing difficult terrain in a vehicle requires use of certain special techniques, as well as careful route selection. Both of which we don't know about. Oh my god. No way. Holy frick. <laughs> this bike's incredible. From Sapiens to Ludens. Now, we're only here because we found these, like, special toys that were destined for this place. A Ludens fan. Yeah, these little figurines. Predicted, like, 110 big ones. Delivering cargo. You the delivery dude? No. Oh, that's a relief. No. I've just about given up on you. I don't know how you do it. Thanks. I really don't. I'm glad that you guys don't forget. Uh, respect, man. Seriously? Respect. Nendoroid Jumbo Ludens. Provided the following new hologram data. Okay. About time I hopped in the whole chiral network bandwagon, am I right? Join the UCA and all that? Yeah, you probably should actually. You help me do that, yeah? So these random folks that are out here that aren't on the network, we can connect them too. Nope, just happened to be in the area. Well, kind of, actually. We found his package, like, randomly. And we're like, oh, it's over there, so, sure. Luden's fan has joined the UCA. Holy moly. Now we can see other players' structures. Oh, thank you, Sam. That's, that's huge. Take care out there. Hey, for this to be the last time we meet, you know? So, uh, I'm gonna need a moment to look over what you brought me. But I'll hit you back via mail after. You guys oh. are right. Hey, I'm hoping maybe you can help me out again. I don't want to be weird, but I, I feel you and I might have, like, a connection or something. We have a connection something? Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. That is, uh, Jeff Keeley. That's cool. So if we look in here... Yeah. So all of our private lockers and everything, not, sh not shared. Like, where we store our stuff, we have to go back to. Which is kind of trippy, if you think about it. Delivery of... Samples of microorganisms found in a BT area. Going to Capital Not City, which was good, but it's... It, it's heavy. Look how heavy it is. T-Rex model stolen by mules. Can't do that right now. 
Uh, it's a recovery, so I could take this. And I'll take... Ooh. Risky. Order involves a lot of cargo. Completing it on foot may prove difficult. Accept it regardless. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I know. I know we got a timer. Don't don't worry about it. The top of mind. Oh, this is gonna be sketch. Look at we're like maxed out. I don't know if the bike can store a lot, but I'm going to check. Where do I see my timer? I'm going to have to manually look at this. What was that noise? Elapsed time, 3 minutes, 11 seconds. Oh, look, it tracks every order regardless. That's cool. 3 minutes. We got plenty of time. You just gotta be careful. Okay, so what can I put on this bad boy? Load onto bike. Yes. 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 Oh, this is unbelievable. You do not have the number of items required? It's because it's on the bike. Okay, so that... If it's on the bike, it's telling us... Oh, cool. Okay, now I gotta get out of here without dying. Oh, that's gonna increase battery consumption. <laughs> Jeez, of course it is. How can I keep up with all of this, man? We better take a look at this. Hold on. How do I know how much the bike is capable of carrying? It doesn't really tell me. It's just saying that it's going to slow it down. All right, well, let's live and learn. Okay, let's roll. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, uh, it's going to record. <sighs> this is so sketch. I think I got to try and look for that area. What the? <laughs> Charge my bats. Not bad. How? I don't... Hold on. Maybe I have to go in through here. It looks like it might be tough to climb, guys. Whoa. I'm very nervous right now. Controlling this bike is... I don't even know how you would describe it. Difficult? <laughs> kind of feel like we're not going to be able to climb that. If this doesn't end in disaster, I'll be shocked. Yeah, that's clearly not happening. New route. New route. New route. We're scrapping that route. We're scrapping it. We're scrapping it. I can't repair the bike. Because I don't have a garage, right? So I, I don't I can't repair it. 
uh, currently, it seems. The reason I was avoiding this is because it looks like it's in mule territory. Uh, so that's the questionable part of this for me. <clears throat> Garages are at the distribution centers? Okay, yeah, well, I need to still reach a distribution center. So... I think I'm just gonna... I'm gonna clear... I'm gonna clear my routes. And... We're gonna come down here. Get to low ground. And I'm gonna try to, like... Outrun these guys, I guess. I don't know how it's gonna work around this water, so we'll have to just... Play it by year. Hey, Mac Tub, am I enjoying it? Yes. Yes. A lot. Probably too much. Okay, we're on the road again. Thanks from the Ludens for the Ludens, man. You're welcome. Oh boy. Shit. See, that's them tracking us, right? Hello, look at that guy on the right. They're coming from all angles here. What the? You gotta be shitting me, Smalls. I wish I could have saw what that said about the sensor poles. Enemy-induced adrenaline rushes. Enemy encounters produce a rush of adrenaline that rapidly restores stamina. Your stamina drops quickly once the rush passes, however. So be sure to rest or drink from your canteen. Okay. And now we go into maximum chill. <laughs> All right. So, pros and cons to the weapon... Or to the vehicle, because... Yeah, we're cruising at a faster speed. But what we're... We're going all the way around and through a more dangerous area. Whereas if we would have taken things just on our back, we could have used um, what I think is probably a better path. I think we're going to be safe. I took the easy way out. Very good lyric. See now... Now we got problems. Because I don't know if we can, like, is shallow water cool? Seems okay. Oh, 
Nice. This thing's getting a like for me. Entering power grid, batteries will not be used while on the grid. Malicious Mikey, that's amazing. Good job, buddy. So much time. Let this charge up real quick. Are you guys saying that there's a garage at these things? If so, how do I find that? The batteries don't get used when you're on the grid. Batteries are solar powered. They're solar powered. They will recharge in clear or cloudy weather. Facilities and major roads have their own power grid, meaning the batteries will not be drained while you're using them. Yeah, okay. So is it just in here they're getting repaired? Is this where it gets repaired or what? Grab the stuff. Yes, okay, and do I have to do anything to like, uh, to trigger that? Or is it just kind of... Oh, it's on the terminal. Okay. Cargo and vehicles near delivery terminals. Cargo carried by vehicles can be submitted to delivery terminals without having to unload at first. Just need to make sure that the vehicle is close enough. Cool. Sam. First, yeah. deliver your cargo, then you can take on new requests. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, here is the crypto bio delivery. And then we have the samples. Yeah, beautiful. Let's roll. Delivered. Signed, sealed, delivered. Welcome back, Sam Bridges. Always a pleasure. Uh, thanks for the delivery. Well, Sam Bridges does it again. Crypto bio should be fine. Much obliged. Doomcoy, you broke it. <laughs> you broke it. Had such an opportunity there. Okay, easy way out. Nice. An A! Wait a second. Wait a second. Why did we only get an A? I thought that was pretty good. Average cargo damage, 1%. I wonder if that's because when I took my bike through the water. Maybe. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. See, because they're 1% damaged. What other way could they have gotten damaged? Well, maybe just the bike hitting everything. Could have been pretty bad. 
I wonder. I wonder if the the I wonder if that cargo outside was like completely damaged. Hey, Egyptian mummies, the corals of seam, crypto biotes. The facility bandwidth has been upgraded, so more structures can be built in the area. And they have higher amounts that they can use now. Because I tried to climb the steep hill. Maybe. Maybe. That's amazing, guys. We are absolutely crushing. Hey, I got something for you. Could be time. Ooh. Nick Easton wishes to express his gratitude. He has given you a cap. Okay, safe travels. Thank you, Nick. There's something different about you. Can't quite put my finger on why. But I swear, I'm not imagining. <laughs> I'm impressed, Sam. You've brought pretty much the entire region together. But the further west you head, the more you're going to have to deal with BTs. Now, we're always looking for new, more permanent solutions. And we know your blood has a measurable effect on them. I told you before that Mama's developing a weapon to leverage that, which is why we need a way to artificially produce more of it. I don't like That's where this is going. Bios. But maybe you already figured it out. If all goes according to plan, we might be able to turn the tide. But first, it's time to bring Port North City into the UCA. The order from Die Hartman is waiting on the delivery terminal. Okay, man. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. Okay. We will. I want to check my mail. Keep this clean. Thanks for the Ludens, man. You're the best, Sam. You brought me something one of a kind. A Ludens figurine signed by none other than the creator himself. Try printing that with a chiral printer. The one you've got is pretty cool, but this? This is a national treasure. Legend has it these Ludens figured prominently in one of the creator's games. Pre-stranding humans. Homo sapiens. We're obsessed with them. You know, it was through these works they reached the next level and became Homo Ludens. Apparently, what they played weren't games in the usual sense, but since they aren't around anymore, we might never know what exactly that means. But these Ludens figures, they were symbols of one game in particular, and I guess you could say that by collecting these figurines, I'm playing a game of my own. Good for you, buddy. That's Jeff Keighley, yes. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, guys, thank you so much for I was I was we just took the timed thing and then I missed I missed some uh alerts. I really appreciate it. Dinky, thanks for the two months. Up scramble, thank you for the one thousand bits. Show love one thousand. Thank you so much. That's very kind. I appreciate that. Duda, thank you for the prime sub. Josh the Black, thanks for the twenty one months. Forget Monster Energy, get yourself some McCafe. Dicey guy, <laughs> thanks for the two months. Kaz, thank you for the bits. And Doom Koi, thanks for the 15 months. Thank you very much, you guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Now, let's let's hit a couple of these. I'd really like to catch up here, otherwise, we're gonna get super, super behind. So if you need to go to the if you need to take a break, if you need to go to the bathroom or grab some food or whatever, and you don't care about this. Now's a good time. We're going to do this for like probably five minutes. Can you customize your bike? I don't know yet. I would love to be able to. Okay. So Chiralium. You'd be happy to know, or you would like to know more about Chiralium. Well, wouldn't we all? Happy to present you the latest theories, but you must be aware that this is all that they are is theories. Chiralium, like dark matter, was born along with our universe and has existed ever since, just not in the dimension we are able to perceive. Until now... Until now, it is the beach that gives us access to that dimension and with it, knowledge of Chiralium's existence. Not just knowledge of it, of course, we have since observed it coalescing into crystalline form and recorded measurable physical and mental effects of individuals exposed to it. It has reshaped our understanding of reality and proven instrumental in the formulation of the multiverse theory of beaches. Multiverse theory of beaches. 
Chiral matter is not affected by the passage of time. As far as these particles are concerned, none has elapsed since the Big Bang. Little wonder they escaped our notice for so long until man and BT first came together in void out and left nothing but corellium in their wake. Many of these claims are yet to be verified, but I believe that this is a fair summary of the scientific community's current consensus on the matter, no pun intended. I shall soon be heading west with the first expedition, and I look forward to learning more about corallium and its connections to the beach along the way. Okay. 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 What if you need a break and care about this? Well, then... Then you gotta stay, man. Ditsa! Thank you so much, man. Appreciate the two months. It was a brilliant game, and I love the way you bring the story out. GG, man. Oh, thanks, dude. I Honestly, I'm having a good time. I honestly am... I'm rather enjoying it. Okay, chiral contamination. Chiral contamination is a result of prolonged exposure to chiral radiation, which is emitted by chiralium, substance discovered at the same time as the beach. Prolonged exposure can significantly impact physical and mental health. The effects are not dissimilar from those observed in individuals exposed to extremely high levels of stress, levels of which could be fatal even. Such traumatic experience can alter hormonal secretions, impair immune response, and contribute to heart failure and induce strokes. The most common symptom of chiral contamination is poor sleep quality due to vivid nightmares. If left unchecked, however, it can quickly progress a more advanced stage in which the aforementioned issues may be observed. The potential impact on an individual's mental health cannot be understated. The resulting hormonal imbalances frequently lead to heightened destructive impulses toward the self and others. Those dominated by such urges are named homo demons, the mad ones. So we've learned about homo demons. In the case of some porters, such as mules, impaired memory and judgment has led them to develop an irrational obsession with their profession, hence the homo gestalt moniker. Uh, while we should be, or while it should be feasible and preferable for most individuals to avoid chiral contamination at all costs, there are those with a de demonstrated resistance who need not be cautious. I speak, of course, of dooms sufferers. Okay. Those with a demonstrated resistance. I speak, of course, of doom sufferers. So we have a resistance to chiral contamination. Got it. What I kind of like that, and I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you've picked up on this too. There, in all of the interviews that we've read and then certain emails and other things that we find strewn about, there's a lot of um, overlapping information. Not to the point where the whole thing is repeating it, but it, it does a good job of driving in the key points of things that uh, really matter. Which is a good way of doing it because they assume, correctly so, that most people aren't going to read everything. So they might come in here and browse through like the yellow things be like, okay, I kind of got it, whatever. Power contamination can be alleviated using similar methods to those used to alleviate stress. Increasing oxytocin secretion through contact with other people which this place doesn't have because everyone's isolated, administering smart drugs, and so forth. In recent years, however, a hormone dubbed lycsin, known to mitigate the effects of chiral contamination while also restoring basic physical and mental acuity, has attracted a great deal of attention from the scientific community. Unlike oxytocin, lycsin cannot be administered externally. It is secreted within the body but only in response to external stimuli, lycsin. It is said to be the hormone principally responsible for the positive feelings that occur when one achieves a goal, enjoys success, receives praises of gratitude, or any other form of like from a fellow human being. Huh. No, wow, okay. So, lycsin generated by these external uh, forces is fighting off uh, chiral contamination as well. That's trippy. It's a social media hormone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the real hormone monster. You guys watch Big Mouth? Oh, don't get me started on Big Mouth. So good. If you're not watching Big Mouth, you're doing it wrong. You're touching yourself incorrectly. <laughs> 
I hope somebody gets that or I'm going to just feel weird. Hey, Shinigami, do I recommend this game? Yes. Yeah, I do. But, I mean, everyone's different. So, you know, whatever. You might like it, you might like it, you might not. Okay, discovery of beaches and the concept of death. When, uh, with the discovery of the beach, the fundamental truth of death was upended. I doubt you'll find many who would deny this. Alas, we can say little with confidence in any objective or scientific capacity for our understanding of this new realm remains in its infancy and is ever evolving, much like our understanding of the universe as a whole. Pay attention, kids. This is going to be important. Perhaps the closest thing we have to a working explanation of the beach relates to the conception of a multiverse. But I digress. The beach is arguably both a concept and a reality. A discrete beach is influenced by the mind of the associated individual and therefore linked to them irrevocably. This is why we have so energetically pursued the psychological, psychoanalytical, and neuroscientific angles when attempting to create a unified theory of the death stranding, the beach, and the related phenomena. There was a fad a while back in which subjects underwent counseling in order to learn more about their beaches and in so doing, gain a greater understanding of the nature of death. Doom sufferers, in particular, provided excellent opportunities for study. An interesting theoretical question arose during that period. If a person's beach was a good product of their consciousness, might animals have beaches as well? A conundrum on the surface, perhaps, but one quickly resolved. Only human corpses undergo necrosis and become BTs. Which proves somewhat conclusively that only a human can possess a beach. And yet this begs another question. If all that is required is consciousness akin to that of a human, could an AI have a beach, an android? I, for one, do not believe so. Why? Because the function of our beaches is to connect the worlds of the living and the dead. If an entity was never born, has not truly lived, and will never know death, surely it cannot have a beach. Probably a good point. <laughs> beach, please. <laughs> beach, please. See you, see you later, Johnny. Just came back from a phone call and Odd's talking about masturbation. Well, maybe for like a brief second there. Egyptian mummies and pyramids. At what point can it be said that man truly understood what it meant to die? It would seem res reasonable to suggest that it was when he began to bury his head or bury his dead. A practice which originated with the Neanderthals. Or Neanderthals, I believe is how it's correctly pronounced. In a way, one might say that our growing understanding of death drove our development as a species. Our fear of it, our attempts to conquer it. Why it could be argued our entire history revolves around these obsessions. Take the great pyramids of Egypt or the tombs in the ancient emperors of China. The more powerful the person, the bigger and grander their final resting place. Or to posit a more radical theory, could the very concepts of power and society themselves have emerged solely to facilitate the creation of such monuments, such challenges to the finality of death? Either way, and leaving behind something they hoped might endure through the ages, the builders of these edifices believe that they too might live on forever. The mummies of the Egyptians are another means by which man sought to fulfill this desire to escape the finality of death. They are created that the spiritual self, the Ka, we learned about somewhere else, would have a physical vessel, or Ha, to which it could return. The Sokushin Butsu, or mummified monks of Buddhism, are similar in this respect. However, the monks in question aim to transition straight from life to Buddhahood, in other words, to forego death altogether. Now the beach has brought us into direct contact with the world beyond. Our relationship with death must further evolve. The next stage in our understanding is upon us. All of this stuff is basically showing like, okay, these things have been around forever, and these are the way people thought about it, but now new things are happening, and we need to understand why we're thinking this way now. We're trying to challenge what we know. Corals of the seam. Life begins in the oceans and it evolved. And as it evolved, it graduated to the land. At least that is what was believed until recently. To creatures of the sea, the land is a harsh and unforgiving place. Given this, what could possibly have compelled these organisms to make such a drastic transition? Consider that fossils of the first fish to adapt themselves to land have been found in regions with unusually large tidal range. Could it be that these creatures developed legs? in order to move more swiftly, in order to more swiftly return to the safety of the sea when stranded. Huh. Could their evolutionary leap have been triggered by this traumatic experience? 
And that kind of links back to uh, the previous thing that we had talked about with the traumatic experiences and what the impact is, like that giant stress thing, hormonal changes and so on and so forth. Could they have experienced like an evolutionary leap? Could things have been accelerated because of the traumatic experience? If so, could similar circumstances have shaped the evolution of the coral-like organisms that inhabit the seam? The seam is kind of like that transition between life and death of the beach, right? And driven them to develop an ability to live between life and death, between time and timelessness. Coral is, after all, older than any organism of the land, and hardly enough to have weathered the mass extinction of 540 million years ago. It is a life form upon which many other organisms rely for survival. Bearing all of this in mind, one could argue that the ability to survive in the seam is indicative of a profound evolutionary leap. And maybe that's what the patriarchy thing, or the uh, pa repatriate thing is. You're going to the seam and back or something. <clears throat> is this because of the concept of dying and returning to life in video games? Like Kojima is fabricating a conceptual framework to justify this guy not dying permanently? I, it could be. I think it plays into it for sure. I think so. Uh, 2.4 million years ago, Homo habilis started to craft stone tools. Hands are so very important, don't you think? Our other sensory organs passively interpret data. Our eyes light, our ears sound, our noses smell, our mouths taste. But hands, hands are much different. To touch requires conscious action, to grasp more so. To connect that which is in our left hand with that which is in our right, still more. And the handprints we see when BTs seek out humans, why? I'd say that's just evidence of our otherworldly friends yearning to forge a connection. They're reaching out to us, attempting to bridge the gap between the realm of the dead and that of the living. So I think when we saw those orange uh, handprints, that's what that's talking about. Chiral Network 1 from Mama, Central Knot, before first expedition's departure three years ago. So the core infrastructure is complete. The basic Cupid ready Chiral Network setup is good to go. Now that all we have to do is connect Central Knot City to Capital and prove that it actually works. Sadly, I won't be here to see it. I've been assigned to the expedition team's second group, so I'll be heading west with the others. But the people in charge here are the best of the best. They'll have the network operational inside of three years, just as planned. I'm sure of it. And while they're seeing to that, we'll be visiting towns and whatnot across the country and putting the facilities in place for when things are finally up and running. Amelie and the others in the lead group will be forging the connections and laying the groundwork to make sure everything goes to plan. We know how that went. That's why we're doing this. Afterwards, we'll just need to link up all or link it all up with operational cupids, and that should be that. Kind of like the Apollo missions back in the day, they used these three-stage rockets to get to the moon, right? Well, we're using a three-stage process to do something almost as revolutionary. Yikes. <laughs> Isn't that tweet a day old? Yeah, but you could still uh, retweet it, and then it feels fresh. It's just to let people know that the stream has happened, you know? Okay, crypto buyouts. I think we only have two left here. And then we're all caught up. We call these bugs crypto buyouts. This is from Fragile. They were recorded in reference books and databases back before the Death Stranding. But nobody ever thought to give them a proper classification. So crypto buyouts, they stay. They're named for the process of cryptobiosis, which means hidden life. When environmental conditions get too harsh or resources too scarce, crypto bios can shut down their metabolic processes and enter an almost death-like state in order to survive. Tardigrades and sleeping chironomids are capable of this too. But crypto bios are on a whole other level. They can survive anything and anywhere, even on the beach or in the seam. They are capable or aren't capable of prolonging their own lives. Humans who eat them acquire a limited resistance to timefall, too. You won't find them lying around just anywhere, though. You need to know where to look. Not many people even knew they existed until recently, so next to no research has been done. But now they, now that their beneficial properties have been recognized, I'm willing to bet they'll play an important role in helping us understand the beach, Death Stranding, and everything else. And lastly, two years ago, Distribution Center, West Capital Lot City. It's been about a year now since we came here from the rear guard. The place, or the first folks through, did us a favor of setting up the chiral relay and patching things up before we arrived. So we're doing all right. Not so sure about everyone else, though. Folks back home sound kind of freaked out. We don't know what's going on in Central or Capital, let alone how Emily 
and the others who kept heading west are doing. But something doesn't feel right. What's more, a lot of the guys have developed some kind of agoraphobia. Like the thought... <laughs> the thought alone of going outside scares the shit out of them. Which is probably what everybody else also has. See, the distro centers and way stations around these parts here aren't like the ones back east. They're much more isolated, out in the middle of nowhere. Can't help but feel cut off from the world. And there's not a lot of staff on hand, neither. Which means you often have to do the work of two guys, which can make it that much lonelier, too. And then you factor in the terrorism rumors. Also, is it just me or does it feel like there's more mules out there these days? Don't get me wrong, I know they're not out to get us. All they want is our cargo, right? Well, that doesn't change the fact that they're not making our work any easier. Especially since a lot of these guys used to be first-rate porters and could run things around if they hadn't, you know. Still, for now, the network systems are up and running and we're just holding out for the day when the second expedition comes along with a working Cupid. Till then, we'll keep things chugging along. That much we can do for bridges and country, am I right? Holy moly, we're caught up! We are all caught up. Believe it or not. All right, let's auto arrange this stuff. And basically all we're carrying, we can res we can deposit these metals. And that's probably about it, really. We'll recycle these and then we'll move on. Great success in my reading. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I know some people are like really into that, and I am, so. Ooh. Prototypes of her design form a part of your next shipment. Yes. A delivery of relief supplies for the people of Port Knot City. Port Knot City is a fair distance from BT territory, but the weapons should come in handy if any stray too close. They'll also provide people with the means to defend themselves when traveling outside the city limits. The shipment also includes a variety of medicines, as well as human sperm and egg samples. These specimens are essential for maintaining genetic diversity as they were donated by civilians living outside the major population centers. By taking advantage of Kyrelium's temporal properties, we can ensure they remain viable for as long as required. After the shipment's been processed, connect the Cupid. Now, once that's done, the entire region will be integrated into the Cairo network. Afterwards, you'll be pushing on to Lake Knot City. So, we've included relief supplies for the people there as well. Of course, to get there, you'll need to cross over the lake in between. Of course. Details on that will be in a second order you'll need to accept then. Without a doubt, this will be your longest run for us to date. Nervous. Make sure you've got everything you need. Okay, so let's uh, recycle the stuff we said. By handing over excess materials to a facility, you can increase the amount stored on site. Now these materials can then be used later for equipment fabrication and so forth. We know this. Just remember that each facility has separate stores and that the amount on hand differs hey, from Maddie. site Hey Maddie, see you later Tootie. Don't get carried away. All right, well we knew that already. We're going to recycle these bad boys. Then we're going to do the uh, garage thing. Thank you for your continued support. Hey, okay, garage. So durability is at 9%. It's, I mean, it has seen better days. So if I store this. Storing vehicle. Sounds like Thank this is my mission impossible. Okay, cool. It's just repaired. I like that. So we're going to... Didn't it say rest in our private room? Didn't it have a, an exclamation there? Okay, so this wants to take us back here. 
This order is critical, so humor me while I review the details. Look at the freaking distance. City's your first destination. You're to deliver relief supplies and bring it into the network. Lake Knot City is your second destination. Again, you'll be delivering relief supplies. You'll also be carrying prototype anti DT weapons, which will give us a chance to see how they perform in cool. the field. Mama will brief you on usage, so pay close attention. And Sam, as a reminder, this run is no joke. You'll be covering a record distance. Don't take any chances. Okay. A blood bag. That's a transfusion bag containing blood drawn from you. While equipped, it'll gradually replenish yours. Hmm. A bag filled with Sam's blood. Equipping it will restore Sam's blood levels over time by means of continuous transfusion via the cufflinks. If you're carrying multiple blood bags, a new bag will automatically be switched in as soon as the current one is emptied. If you're using a blood draining weapon, blood will be drained from blood bags before it is drained from Sam's body. Blood bags can be stored in utility pouches. Okay. And we have hematic Sam, grenades. This is our first attempt at developing an anti BT weapon. I had to work fast with what we had, so they're basically modified hand grenades. At least. That's how they're meant to function. They've never actually been tested in the field. So Who how? Knows? You might be the first person to kill a BT. And wouldn't that be something? But even if they do work, don't forget that they're fueled by your blood. Use too much and you'll give yourself anemia. <laughs> That's trippy. Okay, so I don't know how these are going to vary from the other things. Uh, Sam's blood will tr be transfused into the grenade. Which will explode upon impact when thrown. If any blood bags are equipped, these will be drained first. Okay. So, am I seeing this correctly? Like, these blood bags. Is that saying that we have two in storage? I'm going to guess yes. Let's just look. Before we fabricate it. Oh, see, but it wants me to, like... Here, I'm just going to confirm straight up. That's awesome. It looks really good. Aid, sperm, and eggs. Good. Okay, Sam, so... This is our first attempt at developing oh, an anti-BT weapon. I had to work fast with what we had, so they're basically modified hand grenades. Yeah. It was, she already knows, told us this. You might, but use too much. So that icon means that we're going to get them as part of the uh, mission or whatever. So utility pouch. We've got our blood bags. Where do we have our... Okay, our hematic grenades are stored on our back. Aid, the medicine packs, anti-BT weapons. Aid packs containing anti-BT weapons, including hematic grenades, X grenades, and blood grenades. Okay. No big deal. No big deal. So that's when you were bleeding at the beginning of the game, the BTs were repelled. Yeah, like on our foot or something. Right, Desnia? Bike looks good. Bike looks really good. Here's our hat. Yes. Okay. So, this is a big deal because... Uh, this could get really out of hand. Real quickly. I think I'm going to try and follow this. 
This is the path that we had just come from, which worked out pretty good, actually. We have to go through this sketchy territory again, though. And then... We have a bridge here. We'll connect up. Then over here, it's like, who the frick knows what. I think once I get to this bridge... We'll just, like, take a chill pill here and figure out what we need to do next. Okay, guys. Buckle up. Wacko Kid, thank you for the uh, Prime sub, man. Thank Sam, you so much. Up for performing an experiment with dramatic grenades? Yes. Have you worth taking a look? Oh, I have to take the order to do it? Equipment trial, hematic grenades. Yes, absolutely. I would love to do this. Crystals required, Kyra crystals desired. I'll make a, okay, hold on. Number owned, supplies. Oh, okay, so we're gonna get two more supplies from this one. So I think that's fine. We don't need to take any more. Yeah, cool. Plan to go another five hours today? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. I probably got another hour in for sure. Holy frick! Order assigned. All right, let's put some of this on here. Uh, put the anti-BT weapons on. We'll arrange the rest. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so we need to go to the BT area. Now, <laughs> the problem is... If we go to this BT area... Oh wait, that's the document recovery. Hold on. BT area? Yeah. I'm worried that our gear is going to... Like, the other important stuff is going to be in trouble. Whatever. Only one way to find out, right? Let's save our game here. I can't. Alright, cool. I'm sure it'll be fine. 